Welcome everyone. Thanks for coming to check out this video. So it is time to set up my October bullet journal. And so it's O for October. Now this month's theme is the country of Oman. And this was the only country that started with O. So it made it very easy to choose. Oman is a country I had not heard much about. It's positioned just below Saudi Arabia. And the only time I'd ever really heard much about it is from a relative who helped us out when my husband and I moved to London. And he is an artist and he's a watercolor artist. So I thought it might be cool to show you my very first watercolor kit. It's this travel gold, beautiful thing right here. Um, he actually made these and sold them. I think they're still available, but I'm not sure when they become available. I'll make sure to put the link in the description box because they are very, very handy. You can bring your water with you, your little mixing palettes as well. And you've got all these colors all in a like beautiful little gold case. So I thought I would show that here just because um, he as an artist, spoke about Oman and it was the only time I've ever really heard of it. It was the first time I'd heard of Oman and it was actually the first time that I realized you could do professional art with watercolor. At the time I thought watercolor was mainly for, um, you know, school and children and I didn't realize you could create some beautiful things in watercolor until I went to his house and saw these absolute masterpieces all over his lounge room. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd share that little bit of information about my very first watercolor kit and this basically helped me on my way to learning more about watercolor and exploring that kind of side of my art. So immediately when I thought of Oman, I knew there would be a lot of desert there, but I didn't realize how famous it would be for its oases and beaches. Now, because the country is covered like 82% is desert, I thought it would be a good idea to do desert on the cover, but I felt that it might look a little bit plain if I just did a desert and the girl walking through the desert, it didn't really speak to me. And because I had read about these beautiful oases there, I thought it might be cool to do an oasis sort of cover. So I've decided to do that with watercolor. I'm using a separate piece of paper that I've cut to the size of my two sheets on my bullet journal. So the double spread will be covered by this. I'm really using my watercolor so loosely in this one. I was actually very proud of myself for holding back on the detail, like some of the detail. I do go detailed in some areas, but I was really happy with how I left the watercolor like a little bit looser and just where it dried, I left it like that. Now my traveling girl has arrived in Oman. She's got her trekking gear on. She's ready to explore. She's been through the desert and she's arrived at one of these beautiful oases um, and she is just chilling out having a rest underneath one of the rocks there. So at this point I am approaching the end of the watercolor stage and then I just want to go in and add some depth to those palm trees. Uh, it was really hard to get the palm trees to look like they were set back behind that little sort of rock wall. So I did need to add some sharpness there by using the Pigma Micron. I just went in and added some, sh some shadows in there to show that it was set back and also defined a few of the leaves and things like that. These oases just look so incredible. The colors are amazing. The water is just like pure blue and aqua blue and you can just see straight through to all of these rocks underneath the surface. I tried to capture that in the watercolor but it definitely does not do it justice. Um, I would love to see these in person one day. It just looks so amazing, like utopia. Then after adding some highlights with my white gel pen, I just cut it up um, straight down the center and I measured it out beforehand to suit the exact amount of dots on my bullet journal. So I think it's like 13 centimeters by 19 centimeters and then cut them out and stuck them into either side. I always leave a little bit of a gap at the spine so that it can open properly. If you place it too close, it'll get really hard to open. It'll ruin your artwork. So I did that and then I realized that I have to add the month name. I kind of forgot about that in the preparation. Um, so I unfortunately didn't get to include it inside the image, which I do like to do. Um, so I've just added it as like a little emblem on the outside in a nice gold pen and then added like a little fancy border bit just to add some interest. I felt like it was a little bit flat. So I just wanted to add a little pop of the gold on there. And there we have the finished cover, ready to move on to our calendar page. 
This next page is a place where I like to keep a little reminder of all the birthdays that I have or anniversaries, things like that, that I wanna keep track of throughout the month. And this one in particular, I have done very minimalist. So all I've included is the national flag for Oman and my cleaning tasks in a simple little box. And then down the bottom, I've got my YouTube growth where I just track um, my subscribership. If you haven't subscribed, maybe if you consider that, if you do like this video, that would help me out. Um, and I also put in a little reference to the desert and the national animal of Oman. Now the national animal is actually the same animal as Jordan, the Arabian Oryx. So rather than drawing it again, as I did already do it in Jordan, I thought I would just do a little silhouette of an Oryx climbing up a desert dune. I will be the first to say this is not my best drawing of an Oryx. Not that I've drawn that many, but this one in particular, I felt lacked something. <laughs> it looks a bit funny. It maybe has five legs or something, but we tried our best. It looks all right and I'm moving on. Our next page is the page that I use to keep a list of my needs and wants. So every month I do this page because I like to keep track of things that I need to buy or just want to buy. It's a good place to put things if you want to try and keep hold of your money and not waste money on purchases that you don't need. I find this really helps me out because I can narrow it down to what I actually need versus what I would just want. And I've got to say, I can't remember the time that I bought something that I just wanted. I feel like I'm always checking off things that I need and it just helps me know that I'm not wasting money um, on a monthly basis. Now I thought this was the ideal spot to show some of the kind of souvenirs that you could get from Oman. Um, no surprise here that they are known for their beautiful pottery and baskets and jewelry, all handmade. But one of their most famous things that you can buy there is an Omani Mandu. Um, they're basically a wooden chest that's got all this beautiful ornate detail on it in a gold or a brass. And as I wanted to do this spread in just black and gold, I thought that would look perfect with those kind of colors, just using the gold as the accent on the chest. So I'm happy with how that one turned out. This next page is the meal plan. I could have done a drawing of the national dish schwa or the national dessert, a very famous dessert called Omani Halva. But unfortunately, both of them, I just think I couldn't get to look nice on the spread. They were just, they're, you know, they're kind of, tricky to draw they won't be unique enough to spot that that's the dish itself and I was too intrigued by something I read about Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew is a like a national emblem they love it it's like their alcohol they actually can't drink alcohol you need a license to drink alcohol or serve alcohol um, but yeah Mountain Dew is everywhere there is no coca-cola it is all Mountain Dew and they are just loving it so I thought that was very interesting, so it had to go in this food-based page. <laughs> By the way, here is a little bit of footage that we got from our date night the other night. We actually wanted to try some Middle Eastern cuisine, and there's a restaurant that we've been wanting to go to for ages called the Hummus Club. The food was absolutely incredible. Oh my gosh, it was so, so tasty. We tried a whole bunch of different things, and the night actually was themed the Middle East experience. And the owner of the restaurant even came out and did a speech and spoke to us a little bit about the history. And we got all this awesome footage, and then unfortunately we lost it. And all that's left is this footage of me dripping right down my hand in true Torrin fashion. So unfortunately we lost a lot of footage, but here's a little sneak peek at our date night and hopefully we'll have better luck next time. This next page is my mind map page. Now, if you haven't watched my channel before, the mind map page is basically my brain dump. It's where I collect all my thoughts or if I need to write something down and I haven't got a spot for it, elsewhere in my bullet journal, I will put it in here. And I always like to do these pages with a lady from the nation. And I usually like to do the national flower as well. I didn't in this spread because I couldn't actually find the accurate one. If anyone knows the correct, if anyone from Oman watches this video and you know the correct national flower, please let me know. I think it might be the desert rose, but I'm not hundred percent. So that's why I've just left it out of this spread. I'd hate to yeah, offend and give an inaccurate summary.
summary. So I did find this amazing image of an Omani woman wearing a batula, which is a metallic looking mask that Muslim women would wear traditionally. I don't think they're as popular now, but they've been around since the 18th century and you'll find them everywhere. And even in the rural areas, they'll still wear them and mostly on older women now. I was pretty excited about doing that because it's the perfect opportunity to do gold on the page when it's being part of an image. So I always like to do the faces in as much detail as possible with my colored pencils. And then I go in and add my fine liner around the outside and a bit of texture here and there. It just gives this really interesting contrast between the different um, tools that I'm using. I also found that the lady was wearing this headscarf that had lots of flecks on it, like gold flecks. So I thought I would add those in as well and just made the whole spread really come to life, adding so much gold on there. When I was drawing the scarf part, I basically just drew a lot of lines where the fabric was folding and then relied on my cross hatching technique to give the effect of like a netting fabric. So I'm just using lots of cross hatching to get those shadows in and not really paying attention to where real shadows would be because I want this part to look very graphic and not really realistic, just, just to get some texture on there and have a bit of fun with playing with those mixed tools. Now for my favorite part of adding the gold in. So I'm just using my favorite gold pen, which is a Uniball Broad. I love these pens. I ordered a bunch off of Amazon. And um, if you're interested in getting them, I'll leave the link down in the description box. I, I run, through, run out of these really quickly because I use them all through my bullet journal. But yeah, I just love them. Um, and so then I added the words mind map up the top left side and I'm yeah, I'm happy with the way that font worked out too. I felt like it really went with the character. Um, and then I tried to add some blue texture in a circle shape behind her to add some color on the page, but I wasn't happy with the fact that the texture was running out. Um, so it was all streaky and not nice. So I thought it might be a good opportunity to um, do some masking, some washi tape sort of drawing, I guess. So I've found a washi tape that I absolutely love. Um, this is from the washi tape shop and it's this gorgeous blue color and it's actually got gold birds on it. So I thought I would lay that into where the circle was and then just trim very gently using my, um, my little exacto knife and just go around it and then peel away that excess part. And I'm so happy with how that turned out. I really feel like it. It just made this spread come to life before I felt it a little bit bland, um, but adding that pop of color just always makes me feel so much happier. And now I'm moving on to my goodliness spread. Now this is my habit trackers basically, and I always like to do something that gives me a good feeling or just, you know, good vibes to me. Um, there's no way of describing it actually, but this one was perfect. Um, Oman is known for its frankincense trees. Now, if you haven't heard of frankincense before, it's an essential oil that is incredibly expensive. I know it is because I have used doTERRA in the past and I just always remember the frankincense was just this amazing oil that they call the king of oils because it's not only used for perfume and incense, it is beneficial to reduce inflammation and make hair and skin better. Um, so there's lots of uses that it's supposedly meant to be amazing for. So what I found interesting was the word frankincense actually comes from the old French word that means high quality incense. So very matter of fact about it, it's a super, super high quality resin that comes from these trees um, and they're found in Oman itself. And there's people that go out and basically looks like they just kind of cut into the bark which releases the resin and then once it's dried they can make the oil out of it and that is what we buy in the little oil bottles so that's why I've put those little bottles down at the base and once again I got really excited about using gold in the spread because I thought it's like liquid gold and I would put that in the bottle and have the leaves all be gold as well so yep very happy to use my gold pen again and on the other side of this page, I wanted to include a little drawing of the loggerhead turtle. Now, they, these guys actually nest on the Masira Island in Oman, 
and they're one of the largest nesting populations in the world, maybe even the largest. Um, and so 30,000 female turtles come to this site to lay their eggs and then it's actually a real experience that you can go to these places and watch the turtles um, either lay the eggs or the little hatchlings, the little turtles come out of their eggs and go into the water. I personally would love to see this. I find turtles amazing and it was a great opportunity for me to draw a turtle. I got pretty excited again. Hey, I'm getting excited a lot in this spread. Um, I got excited to draw a turtle in this um, and have it mean so much as part of their country is the conservation of these turtles. They get a lot of, they get four out of the six types of turtles come here for nesting. So that was pretty impressive. Another little interesting fact is that the loggerhead turtle, although that's one of the biggest sites for it to nest, the next biggest on the list was Western Australia, which was amazing. That's where I'm from. So to have that connection was very interesting to me. Um, so yeah, that's why I decided to draw this cute little guy. And now I can see his cute little face whenever I'm doing my daily tracking of my habits. Now for the final page where I am setting up my first spread of weeklies. Um, this week is rather small, it's just one to four because I like to always have my weeks going from Monday to Sunday or ending on the Sunday at least. So that's why I've just got one to four in this spread. Um, I always like to do my weeklies in black and gold. It just gives me good feelings. And because I spend so much time setting these journals up, I like to make it easier for me throughout those weekly pages and just keep them quite minimal. So I decided to do the famous Sultan Caboose Grand Mosque. Um, that's found in Muscat in the capital of Amman and it is an amazing building. The architecture is incredible. There's so many photos of it. It was hard to choose one to suit, um, but I found one that I wanted to work with that was front on. And so that's why I've drawn it across the base of these pages. I'm just doing it in my Pigma Micron and my gold pen, as I said, and I'm just adding some little sparkles at the end to give it some, some life. I'm really happy with how this turned out and I'm glad I got to use it in the journal because when you see Oman pictures, this is the first thing that comes up. It's this yeah, amazingly beautiful building um, and this mosque that's just huge and it's really a central part of the capital city of Muscat, which I actually don't know if I'm saying correctly. I'm not sure if it's Muscat or Muscat, but yeah, apologies if it is wrong. If anyone knows, feel free to let me know. And that brings us to the end of this month's setup. If you enjoyed it, please like this video to help me out. And if you wanna see more of my content, just click the subscribe button along with the notification bell so you can see more of my videos. And next week I'll be putting out the rest of this setup where I do my weeklies. And on that video, I'm going to ask you guys what country you wanna see for November in my bullet journal. So it's gonna be a country starting with N. I will put out the vote for that next week in that video. So stay tuned till then and I'll see you all soon. Bye.